We've got a few days of excitement coming along, haven't we? We have. We have, because... We are having an Air Force heat pump fitted. Just there. Just there. So we have a bit of work to do to move all the junk out of the way. Junk accumulates here. And then we're having the um, boiler in here removed. This is an oil boiler, oil fueled boiler. And um, in here, I think there's going to be a, a buffer tank or something, they say. And some different valves, maybe, I don't know. And we lose the boiler. And we lose the boiler. And eventually, in the end, we'll do some fine double filled tanks. Oil tanks. Yeah, with some oil in them. With some oil in them. <laughs> Which we've got to decide what to do about it. Yeah. Anyway, it should be an interesting few days. And also, we're having a, a mixergy tank installed upstairs, if we ever get one. <laughs> Which we hope we will. We oh, have an and we have an, a, a visitor. Hello, visitor. <laughs> so we've now cleared oh. this space. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All they have to do is put an air pump in there. Easy. They have to. Oh, yeah, and they've got to dig a trench there, across here so as well, haven't they? Yeah. Interesting. So much. Lots of work. <laughs> and this is upstairs and uh, the airing cupboard where this is our old tank and the new mixergy tank is very tall and we'll have to extend right up to I think it's about 2.3 meters or something like that. Yeah just over two meters. Um, so this will be coming out and the new tank will be going in there, a bit of pipe work to sort out and also we'll be having the PV diverter connected so somehow we've got to run an ethernet type of wire back down to um, where the incoming electricity is. About an hour ago we had a, a bit of a drama when we had a huge lorry the size of a giant removal van um, bringing us a delivery just as we were going out on our bikes and delivered the heat pump which is truly large and um, pretty heavy as well I think it's 240 kilos this delivery and the guy had a bit of a struggle getting it off of his uh, lorry and down here but uh, he did it and um, so we're all set for guys coming tomorrow now they should have been here today we thought but they're actually coming tomorrow to start the installation and they have to get it through this door here and over that step. And this is the cable which is pretty hefty and inflexible. <laughs> goes from here back to the tails there so it's going to connect into this distribution box and then go around there and then all the way along here and up through the wall and finally so far up to here but it's going to end up on that wall this is the um, connector point. So this is Monday and uh, this is about the last time this boiler is going to be running. They're taking it away today and we have people everywhere. All sorts. Here's the heat pump. Lots of stuff, some new radiators. It's all happening. Oh. 
Only to he's got the heavy end, to be fair. Shit. Yeah, it's not. It's one of the other things. That? Yeah. I've got a picture of the wire through the wall. Yeah. There he goes. And I think we come back in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just how the plumbing, um, which is wrong, quite obviously wrong, was uh, never spotted as being in error, I do not know. Um, both the flow and the return are coming to the buffer tank. There is no way that the domestic hot water is getting a uh, direct feed from the heat pump. Anyway, that's the way it is, and hopefully this coming week they'll be coming along to fix that, which is quite a, a lot to do, but they have to do that. We don't have any domestic hot water being supplied by the heat pump. Uh, it's running quite happily on the immersion heater, uh, running on electric only. Apparently the return is alright, even though um, it comes to a common into the buffer yeah. tank, it will flow out again back round so you get a circuit. You know how water gets around. That's all right. Whether we want it to or not. Yeah. today, which is Friday the 29th of October, will be the day when our hot water gets heated by the heat pump. 
So the problem has been that the return, which is down there, from the hot water, is going into the buffer tank and we're getting no flow around the, the hot water system. We had things corrected so that the flow here, here, to the hot tank does come direct, but they decided not to put the return back. We think that's causing the problem of the flow. We're hoping so. Anyway, we're hoping today will be the day when everything works. We've had a few changes uh, recently due to flow problems on the hot water circuit. And so with this in mind, we've had this pump put in, which I think is a heavier, heftier pump, and we've had some pipe work changes here, so that we're now on 22 millimeter piping, 22 millimeter piping, uh, up to the hot water tank, which is um, goes up through here and through into the room, and then up to where the hot water cylinder is. Unfortunately, we still don't have sufficient flow rates. The, uh, the flow rate is currently at uh, 7 litres per minute. We really need it to be 20 plus litres per minute. It's 20 plus when it's running through the buffer tank here on this pump. But uh, when it goes on to the hot water circuit, it drops right down to 6 to 7. The tank doesn't heat up to uh, anything like hot enough for our bath water, or shower water for that matter. We're on, I think we're on week seven or eight now of this installation. A three day job. Today we're hoping we will solve our hot water flow rate problem and we'll be replacing this heat exchanger here with this rather splendid brand new plate heat exchanger which we got from Mixergy yesterday and uh, will be installed hopefully this afternoon and we'll solve all our problems. Fingers are crossed. Now, in fact, on investigation, there wasn't much rubbish inside this plate heat exchanger. And eventually, after a bit of diagnosis and a lot more looking around, we found out that the culprit was in the buffer tank area between the buffer tank and its pump and they had not fitted a non-return valve which caused all the flow problems. The plumber made the original mistake but it wasn't helped because we never saw a technical diagram of the installation. This is our diagram. Up here on the panel. This is 18.6 18.5 water flow and I think we finally got a working system with a flow rate of 18.7 at the moment which is just about adequate but that's okay as long as the um, heat pump keeps going this is them driving off into the sunset <laughs> 18.6 <laughs> There they go, we hope never to be seen again for a while. Well, have a couple more. The other piece we have is um, the internet gateway, which is this tiny little box here. It allows us to remotely alter some settings, a very small subset of the settings. Mm -hmm and um, also it allows us on our home network to 
actually change all of the settings which we can normally get to via the uh, the panel up here so that's really pretty useful but um, you can't get to all the settings when you're actually going across the internet but it means that when we go on holiday which we're just about to um, we can keep an eye on things and if necessary increase the temperature to um, compensate for very cold temperatures if it gets very cold here the heat pump is quiet at the moment because we're going away and I'm just checking out holiday mode and what settings to leave it on. It's been working pretty well. Uh, we're pleased with the way it goes. Uh, the controls are reasonable now, especially since we've got access over the internet to see what it's doing. We feel sort of okay being away for six weeks. Um, it's now May and we've survived the winter. We've been away, we've turned this off, we've been able to thermometer the temperature at all times, and we like it. We like it. It's working well, and uh, it seems reliable and uh, efficient. reasonably efficient, yeah, which we haven't got the full figures yet, but we'll, we're watching it and it looks okay. For example, to heat up our full hot water tank of two, uh, 210 litres, it um, takes about two kilowatts of power electric power which is pretty fantastic really so it does work efficiently um we are glad it's over that installation was a bit of a nightmare no a huge nightmare that was probably the worst installation we've ever experienced yes i think so and maybe we should have researched um our installer a bit better who knows whether we'd have been able to find out it's very difficult to to do these and we were in a bit of a rush because we wanted to go on holiday and um, the pressure <laughs> was on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, the salesman was really nice, sir. The salesman and, was and very nice. Yes. In the middle of the night. And the workers were very good. They, they the just workers... lacked organisation. Yes. And, and uh, one... go on. And uh, someone to tell them exactly what to do. A plan would yeah. have been nice. They had no system diagram. We, we think if they'd have had a system diagram, and that they'd have been working from that, then they could have checked against that when things weren't working and probably spotted the errors early, much earlier. Yeah. So that's where we are. Well, um, they might have spotted the errors rather than wait for us to find yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. It, it was, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But we did learn a lot. We know how it all works. <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> the the one of... outcome of this is we're now experts in all things about hit pumps. <laughs> Well, at least it's a, a lot more than we thought we would have to be. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, we're looking forward to seeing how the figures work out. And we'll make another video at the end of this year or the end of the summer. And just to sort of show how well or not it's been going since um, from now onwards. So that's where we are. And um, it's now time to close this video, isn't it? I think so. We're fed enough. <laughs>